0940 on Monday morning, May the 23rd, 2011. And a small moment in history as the first branded Flying Scotsman train for many years pulls into London's King's Cross station. I think it's absolutely excellent. Um, we've come down from Edinburgh in four hours. We've had a really fantastic morning, great customer reaction. So I think the Flying Scotsman's going to be a roaring success. There's a growing demand for a fast early morning service to London from Edinburgh and the northeast of England. And that's one reason why this iconic service has been resurrected. The whole idea is that you can travel from Edinburgh or Newcastle to London. You can be here at 9.40, you can be at work in the centre of London at 10 o'clock. And we hope this will convince people to try travelling by train rather than air. It's much quicker. And of course it's, it's uh, city to city, so um, you know it's going to be a very popular service and, and we've responded to customers, which is a really massive uh, a win for us as a business. The train left Waverley Station at 05.40 and just four hours later arrived on time to quite a reception on Platform 1 at King's Cross. What did you think of your reception this morning, dear? It was wonderful. Oh, very good. Hope yeah. oh, we get every morning. Did you expect it to be like no, this? No, no. Yeah. didn't realise. It didn't yeah. Making history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful. Really brilliant. Brilliant, really good. Okay, you're making history. Yeah, I'm making history. With a cake. It was amazing. Yeah, I mean, I usually get this train down for work anyway, so to get down an extra half an hour early, always a bonus. There's just one stop on the way at Newcastle, where former Olympic gold medalist and world record holder Jonathan Edwards joined for business in London. I mean, obviously the Flying Scotsman will take uh, you know, all the headlines, but I think the exciting thing behind that is that whole change in, in the, the timetable. Lots more services, much faster running trip trains, and it makes London and indeed the whole of the East Coast much more accessible. In its heyday, the Flying Scotsman was the East Coast Line's flagship service and was one of the world's fastest trains, although the name goes back to the 1860s when the first Flying Scotsman took more than 10 hours to cover the 392 and three-quarter mile journey from Waverley to King's Cross. Yes, there's plenty of history in this famous name. First uh, non-stop on for quite a long time, so it's absolutely brilliant. It's uh, nice to be the driver of the train. Must be feel very proud to do that. Yeah, it's be great to tell the kids. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm absolutely delighted with today. It's, it's, a, it's a milestone for this company and it's had a tremendous reception. You know, um, customers joining it at Edinburgh and then again at Newcastle, absolutely delighted with the improved uh, speed and, and uh, frequency of getting into London to start their day um, in the capital. A train full of happy people, lots more people want to use the railways, taking market share off the airlines. Everything we want to do, more services, faster services, greater capacity and getting them in on time as well. I think this is the start of bringing the great back to East Coast. It's a fantastic business, it's had a few problems in recent years and this is the beginning of a new era. So a fantastic step forward for the entire business and everybody who works in it. I feel very proud of what we've achieved, it's fantastic for the team and I hope everybody in East Coast feels the same way.